Hello everyone, Genghis here once more, and today we're gonna focus on StarCraft again. This is going to be my second and possibly even last tutorial video. And I'm gonna try to, well, I'm gonna start by explaining a tech tree, and then after I'm just going to try and explain a lot of terminology, aka StarCraft or ARTS specific words, which you're going to uh, hear or get used a lot in commentating of any games, be it professional or not, and which you really should know as well as some concepts and stuff like that. And also some of the really basics of the game, like how a normal game would probably start. So to start off, we're just going to have a look at the Terran tech tree, uh, just so you get kind of an idea how the game develops. You start off with a command center and a bunch of workers, as you probably know. You can obviously upgrade the um, command center, but for that you need either a barracks or, a or an engineering bay, depending on what you want to upgrade it to. You need a supply depot, which is what you also gives you supply, to be able to get a barracks. Once you get a barracks, you can start making marines and reapers. If you want to do marauders, you also need to have a tech lab attached. And if you want to do ghosts, you need a tech lab attached and a ghost academy. So something which is pretty common, or which is going to have all around the, the Terran tech tree. For example, once you get a factory, you can do widow mines and hellions. And if you want to do tanks and cyclones, you also need a tech lab attached. And if you want to do swords, you need a tech lab attached and an armory. And here, again, the same. You can do these three units immediately. For the Banshee and the Raven, you need a tech lab. And for the Battle Cruiser, you need a tech lab and a fusion core. So it goes pretty much barracks, aka infantry units, unlocks the factory, which unlocks mechanical units, uh, or which allows you to do mechanical units, which unlocks the starport, which then, once you finish it, allows you to do air units. Otherwise, you only need a command center to do an engineering bay, which allows you to do missile turrets and center turrets, as well as a planetary fortress we saw over here. The barracks also obviously unlocks the ghost academy, which you then need to do ghosts, as well as bunkers, which are a defensive structure, and the factory unlocks the armory, and the starport finally the fusion core. So yeah, you can't do a fusion core at the same time as your first starport, you first have to finish your starport, then build a fusion core, and then you could start building battle cruisers if you would want to do that. Also, there are a bunch of upgrades in the tech labs, which I'm going to show you once we actually start the game. I'm just going to play against uh, easy AI, which is no challenge whatsoever, but which should give me enough time to show some things and um, kind of explain what's going on, I hope. I really haven't completely structured this thru through. I'm going to try and go along the way. I hope I'm not going to forget too much. I really want to do this video, but I really didn't know how to, and I figured this is the best way I kind of came up with. So that's that. So Zergs at the beginning of the game have a lot of melee units, while Terrans have none of those. So we are going to, or you will always start as a Terran against Zerg, and at the moment also against Protoss, by doing a wall off. The nice thing about supply depots is that, on top of giving you supply and unlocking the barracks obviously, you can actually lift them and put them into the ground, and when they're into the, into the ground mode, your units can walk over them, so you basically have a wall with a door, which is obviously really, really nice. As soon as our supply depot finishes, we build a barracks. All of this only costs minerals. We're going to start a gas. Ah, we should have started that earlier, but it doesn't matter. We're going to start a gas right now, which will allow us nearly when the barracks finishes to have enough for Reaper. Normally I would have enough, but I kind of derped out. We're also going to send SCP to Scout once he finishes building the barracks. Scouting, obviously, is something I guess you know, but it, you know, it literally means gaining information about what your enemy is doing. The Reaper, which will come after the SUV, since it's got a pretty long construction time, is also going to help us um, scout, which is pretty nice. Because that way we can get a lot of information off, and the Reaper is also pretty nice at the beginning of the game to do some harassment and punish any enemy going too greedy. Also, as soon as we start that Reaper, which costs 50 gas. gas and 50 minerals, my reads cost only 50 minerals. Um, both of these units cost one supply, by the way, Ghost and Marauders cost two supply. Start the second base. As you can see over here, we're currently upgrading to an orbital, which will allow us to throw down mules for extra income, and which will also allow us to scan if ever we need to do that. When we are scouting, we're looking out for one thing mainly. Has our enemy taken any gas yet? As we see, he has taken already one gas a while ago and is now taking a second gas. 
Obviously, yeah, it's an AI. What he's doing is pretty stupid. I'm not going to lie in that regard. We're going to follow this up with a factory, a second gas, and a reactor. Oh, as soon as we get the money for the reactor. Oops. Right now what I'm doing, this is actually really awesome. This is, what I'm doing right now is kiting. I'm faster than the enemy units and I have more range. Throw down that mine. Which allows us to pretty much shoot him without taking any damage. Oops, that's not what I, okay. That was like a double mystic, which was pretty fucking bad. But whatever, we lost our reaper we really shouldn't have. Also, I forgot to do... <sighs> Talking and playing at the same time is fucking hard. <laughs> this reactor should be finishing at the same time as the factory. As you can see, that's not really the case. But whatever, there are worse things. Uh, we're just going to go for some harassment. Harassment basically means you're going to try and do damage to the enemy's economy, but you're not actually investing that much. And we're going to do that in the form of a Widow Mine drop, with like six Marines and one Widow Mine, or maybe four Marines and two Widow Mines. As you can see, we're using mules for extra mineral income, we're mining just about as much gas as we need. In the early game, the more gas you mine, uh, the more minerals you mine, pretty much. We're also going to add two more barracks right now. Uh, so it's really a trade-off if you want to... Like, gas is what you need for anything technological. Technological, For example, medevacs cost gas, mines cost gas, star parts cost gas, factories cost gas, upgrades cost gas, add-ons cost gas. All that stuff costs gas. So, um... However, obviously, if you're mining gas, those ma same SCVs are not mining minerals, you also have to pay the gas, which costs 75 minerals, like the gas geyser. And thus, the more gas you mine, the less minerals you mine. Which is why it's pretty much a trade-off, like the most economical early game builds will mine no or very limited amount of gas, while the most aggressive ones are going to mine a lot of gas very early on. Um, I hope that kind of makes sense. So this opening I'm going for is kind of safe against any very early game aggressions. Or is, yeah, you know, rather safe, if not safe, it's thing ever. While also being economical enough, because I'm going for fast expansion, not ultra fast, but fast expansion. And additionally, oops. We're going to let the Widow Mines do their work. Lift back up our Marines, get out of there. We're able to do some nice economical damage if the enemy is doing some mistakes or... Um, stuff like that. Since we are harassing, and since we're not investing much, because we're not all in or anything, we're just doing some harassment. I think I use that word way too often right now, but whatever. Um, 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 um. We are not in any obligation of like, I have to do a lot of damage or I'm behind, you know? Like, if I manage to do a lot of damage, I'm ahead. If I do no damage, I'm slightly behind. Depending also on if I lose my units or not. But in no case, I'm fucked. Um, so, on Tech Labs for Terran units, you have upgrades. Which are designed pretty much unit specific. For example, Combat Shields, Marines gain plus 10 life. All Marines ever build and all those you already have, from that moment on, have plus 10 life. Well, for example, in the engineering bay and the armory, or evolution chambers or forges for the other races, you have m way more general upgrades. All infantry units gain plus one attack. And all infantry units gain plus one armor. Um, basically, how damage works in StarCraft is pretty easy. You have an attack, which is of 6, with a range which is of 5, and a weapon speed of 061. Weapon speed being the reload time, not the rate of fire, by the way. And then you have armor. For example, this tank without any upgrades already has one armor. So if I shoot that tank once, as you can see, it lost 5 HP, 6 damage, minus 1 armor. Really simple, no RNG. Um, <laughs> playing so bad right now. And uh, that's that. Now, what concepts do you have? Oh, yeah. You have two basic concepts in StarCraft 2. You have macro, and you have micro. Macro being everything that is related to building units. Building units, building buildings, building or making upgrades, building workers, all that good stuff 
is called the macro part of the game. While everything which is to do what you actually do with your units, for example spreading them, doing hit and run, stuff like that, or hit and run being the same thing as kiting, which I showed at the beginning of my Reaper, is micro. Um, additionally, you have a different, like you have a couple openings. I already talked about this opening, I guess, quite a bit. It's an opening which does, which is kind of safe, but still economical without being greedy, and which, um, what else would I say? And does some harassment, right? So I guess you could say it's slightly aggressive. Then you have builds on one or two bases, or even at any point, which are called, well, basically you have a situation where you go all in. What does that mean, as a word kind of, I guess, says? When you're all in, it means that you have all your eggs in one basket, pretty much. And it means I have to win very soon, or I lose because I'm going to fall more and more behind. This could be the case if you lose all your workers due to enemy harassment. So you have no economy, the enemy still does. Uh, AKA, the longer the game goes, the bigger his advantage is going to become. And well, bigger advantage is less good for you, right? Um, damn, I'm smart sometimes, Kappa. Let's throw down some missile turrets. You have cheese. Uh, actually, no, let's stay on all in. You can also, though, choose to go all in yourself by going for a very strong timing. At any point in the game, which could be with with technology, without technology, but where you're cutting something. So you want to have more units, and to be able to have more units, you're deliberately cutting your upgrades. Cutting meaning not doing your upgrades, or not building more workers, or not taking more bases, or not going further into your technological, uh, technological development, in order to have the strongest timing possible, and hit at a certain point. Late games all in, so like two or three base all ins, often also actually start on a greedy build, so that your timing is that much stronger and happens that much faster. Um, greedy obviously meaning you have little but no units, or little or no units, aka if your enemy is going for anything aggressive or very aggressive, you pretty much lose at that point, unless you do the best defense ever. However, you're getting a lot of economy and a lot of upgraded technology or whatever very early on, which then puts you ahead in that department. And as soon as your economy starts paying off, you are going to be able to produce way more units than your enemy who went for a not that greedy build. Um, then you have timing attacks. Well, the AI decides it's a nice moment to um, go die. For example, right now my 2-2 is finishing. Uh, if I would macro a bit better, I would have two uh, 200 population. So I could decide, I'm going to kind of do that right now. Like, let's just take this. I'm going to do, I could be doing right now a timing attack on my 2-2. Which would mean the upgrades, uh, the investment I put into my upgrades long ago, just now paid off. Because during all the time the 2 2 is researching, your units are no better than 1 1. It's only once it finishes, your units are that much better. As you see, now my marines do 8 damage and not 6 as they had on the beginning of the game, and they have 2 armor. Um, and as that investment just finishes, now is a point where I'm going to be strong in the game and able to use that to my advantage and attack. Let's look at his army. Does he even have an army? Oh my god, this guy. Oh my god, easy AI. Okay, well, this is going to be my timing attack. And all this is going to go back up because I don't want to win the game right now. Also, does Overlord have drop? Are you kidding me? Really? Really, AI? Oh, okay. Let's go some of his workers. This, by the way, is kiting. Or hit and running. Hit and attack, by the way, is the exact same thing. But the other way around. So, it's if I want to close the distance towards the enemy. You know, let's say the enemy is here. Or his units are spread out all over here, and I want to get to close quarters for whatever reason, I would go attack, move, attack, move, attack, move. Obviously it doesn't work right now because there's nothing to attack. Uh, let's just overstim his units and then send them to die. Um, so that's a timing attack, that's a greedy build. Uh, if you play, you can also play base trade or economical damage kind of builds, where I would 
be putting all my focus on being in an aggressive posture on the map. So let's say I have my army generally around here, for example, in the middle of the map. But actually being aware that normally I will not be able to defeat the enemy army. However, I'm going to keep him at home because if he starts moving out, like you win the game in StarCraft when you destroy all enemy buildings, yeah? Normally games end before that because people just, you know, know they have lost now and decide to give up. Uh, at, en at any level, yeah? But, if I have my army over here and he wants to attack me because he's got a better army in the front of fight, he can't really do that. Because I see him move out, you know, I have a marker here or something, I see he's starting to attack, I just move my army up around here, come back, and when he's like in the middle of his map, I'm already in his base. And I start killing his buildings, his workers, and so on. And at the same time, so because of that, he's not going to move out, he's going to be kind of forced to stay defensive. And at the same time, I'm going to try to do economical damage by doing drops, for example, or run buys, if I were, but I'm Terran. Drops, which pretty much means putting units into medevacs. Medevacs are able to fly around and drop units off, at least already at the beginning of the game. That would be kind of an harassment base trade kind of game style. You also have cheese, uh, which is something you will hear a lot in pro games. Cheese is when you're doing an all-in, but really, 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 really early in the game. So before doing any upgrades, nearly no economy and so on, most of the time also involves a proxy. That's another good word. Proxy is basically when, or is, when you put some of your buildings not in your base, but very close to the enemy base. For example, let's say I want to go for a Banshee opening, Banshee being this air unit which shoots down and is pretty good at doing economical damage and stuff like that. I'm going to kill him with like two drops. Um, obviously, if I build that Banshee here, until it gets to the enemy base, it's going to fly for around 30 seconds. However, if I were to build my starport and then my Banshee over here, you can see the distance between here and here is really short. And I would arrive that much faster, which would increase the chance that he doesn't have appropriate defenses yet by, well, by that much, pretty much. Um, so yeah, a cheese is if you put all your eggs in, is this really your army? Like, are you actually trying to attack me, mate? This is hidden attacking, actually. You see, I'm moving forward between my shots uh, to be able to not allow those thingies to fly away. Now, so many mules. Um, what else is there to talk about? Technology. Right now, I'm kind of on the mid-technological army. And I'm actually choosing not to develop, for whatever reason. Which is what most games of StarCraft actually end up being. Like, mid-tier technology. Why this mid-tier? I have Marines which are literally like the easiest unit to build, the first unit for Terran. I have tanks, which are somewhere in the middle, since they do require a factory and a tech lab, but they don't require an armory or anything special like that. And uh, yeah, and I have medevacs, which only require a starport, not even a tech lab or anything in that way. Uh, you know, no, no fusion core, no nothing. So I have a mixture of low technology and rather high but not high-end technology units and this is kind of an army which is pretty cost-effective very mobile packs a punch thanks to the siege tanks has a lot of mobility thanks to the medevacs has a lot of sustain thanks to the medevacs healing power and also a bunch of mobility and firepower thanks to the marines and is also able to cope well with both air and ground armies of most types since marines actually shoot up tanks are good against ground units and, uh, yeah, that's that. Medivac's healing or soapy. Just to show that off, right? I'm, you know, I'm just bored right now. Okay. By stimming, stimming is a Terran thing, which, just to explain that real quick, it does 10 damage to your Marines, but then they are 50% faster and shoot 50% faster for 20 seconds. If I overstim all my Marines, just look at how fast the Medivacs heal all that up. I mean, this is just insane. And we have a changing over there. It is just insane. Anyway, what else do we have? So we have micro, macro, oh yeah, splitting. I guess it's pretty obvious, but splitting, I'm gonna show that off right now. Tanks do splash damage. 
and a lot of other units in the game splash damage. Marines have a very small, are a very small unit as you can see on that circle on the bottom, so they, you know, eat a lot of splash. If I were to shoot this marine, just once, see, the marines in the middle all took a lot of damage, like the marines closest to them. Marines around all actually took a bunch of damage, and then the marines on the outside took none. Now let's seal that stuff up. Splitting basically is when you spread out your units so that oh they are further away from each other. Obviously, splitting them up. Why is that guy following that guy? Anyway, so let's say something like this. Right, this is a pretty decent split. If I now shoot this marine with my tank, basically only that tank took damage. Would you please stop pissing me off, EV AI, with your like zero zero muters? Wow, oh, they're actually one one. Okay, so let's show off some more sexy hit and attack. Um, so that's splitting. What else is micro you can do? Actually, yeah, another example of micro. Tanks can get lifted into medevacs, but otherwise they're immobile. Okay? So, if I want to, let's say the enemy is attacking over here, tanks have a huge range, as you can see. Like, this is huge range for StarCraft 2. Enemy attacks starts getting closer, and the enemy is going to be able to shoot from about here. So, let the tanks shoot once, shoot twice, and then I pick up my tanks, boost them away, and drop them again further away, when the enemies are still over here, and I can put one more shot into them. For example, that's a nice example of what micro can be. I'm out of changing this guy's spamming. Um, let's go just drop him because I'm bored. What else is there to talk about, so? Cheese all in. Cheese all in. Greed. Then there are aggressive builds, which are a bit like an all in, but where an all in is normally means. You have to kill the enemy, or you lose, in the next 1, 2, 3 minutes. A very aggressive build can be, so to say, satisfied with doing damage. So for example, you're on 2 bases, the enemy is on 3 bases, you do a... Like the enemy just took a third, you're on 2 bases. Yeah? Third base. You're going for an aggressive build, whereas with an all-in, you would be on the condition of you have to kill. With an aggressive build, you could have the condition of if I manage to kill with sec uh, his third base, I'm actually going to be ahead because he has put a lot of money into the base, into the extractors, into the defensive structures, maybe some other buildings you can pick off into the worker there, which I will destroy before they're able to pay off. And I can then maybe even take my own third after that. However, in the aggressive build situation, it requires you to definitely do damage. So it's... If I don't manage to do damage, I'm far behind or even lost. If I manage to do a decent amount of damage, I'm ahead. And with some luck, if he's going really greedy or something like that, I might even be able to win out right, right there. Um, I think I covered everything I kind of wanted to cover. So let's just do a quick recap once more. Oh, that's probably the third one I'm doing right now. You start the game with a command center and workers, or with a base and workers for every race. At the beginning, you build some basic uh, production buildings and some basic units, such as barracks and marines in the Terence case. You have to make choices of how much you invest at the beginning into economy, into basic production buildings, which can be used for very early on made all-ins, or, or cheaters, or aggressive builds, and into technology. Technology can, well, technology is a bit tricky because it can be a sign of you're trying to go for the later stages of the game. For example, uh, if you want to get very fast upgrades done, because since they, you know, you have to do them one after the other and they take forever. Or it can also be that you're trying to harass or even be aggressive if you're going, for example, for a very fast unit which costs a lot of gas. For example, very fast tanks, very fast medevacs, banshees, liberators. Obviously, the more gas you mine at the beginning, since you have a very limited amount of workers and uh, of income, the more gas you're mining, the less minerals you're mining, so you're falling back behind in economy just by mining gas. I'm talking about the very early stages of the game, yeah, just to make that clear. 
Um, later on, there are different ways you can play. You can be rather campy or defensive, trying to, for example, get a really awesome army, which straight away has a lot of very good units. You can be going for timing attacks on, for example, plus one, plus one, or plus two, plus two upgrades, or a timing attack on stim, combat shield, and tanks and medivacs. So your goal is to get three tanks, four medivacs, 20 marines with combat shield as fast as possible, just taking a random example, and do a timing then, because you know for that point of the game you have a very strong army, and I uh, hope you can kill the enemy or at least do a lot of damage. You can open very greedily, for example, if you start with a command center, like supply depot, command center, and only after that you add more barracks, which obviously puts you far behind in unit production and also technology, because you're not going to have gas for quite a while, since you need all that money for the command center and the barracks and the SUVs. However, it gives you a huge economy boost because you can actually produce SUVs or workers two by two, SUVs being workers, yeah, just to make that clear, way earlier in the game than your enemy. Um, obviously, in StarCraft, since most upgrades are limited to certain units, let's just, I want to show that real quick. For example, I don't know, on the Star Park Tech Lab, we have six upgrades. Here we have three, and I think on the factory you have three. Here you have three times three, here you have two times three. There's a lot of different upgrades. And the more upgrades you pay, the less units you have. So, in the end, normally an army focuses on between two and five different units, I would say. I mean, for example, infantry upgrades are for all infantry units, so you could do all the upgrades here and then do an army, which is a mix, which is very common, by the way, of marines. Marauders, which I should probably build some from, just to show you off how they look. Ah, uh, come on, Genghis. Um, medivacs for the healing and mobility power, and maybe some tanks or some mines or some vikings or some liberators, depending on what your enemy is doing, and maybe adding on some ghosts, which are really expensive units later on in the game, if they counter something the enemy is doing. You can also obviously go full mech, which would mean a lot of tanks, a lot of hellions, some tours, and some vikings for anti-air and stuff like that. But you will nearly never, well at a pro level, you will never see anyone this guy. Um, go for... You know, I want to have Viking, Medivac, Liberator, Raven, Banshee, Battlecruiser, Cyclone, Tor, Tank, Ghost, Reaper. Because just of the amount of upgrades to actually stay competitive and cost efficient, that you would need being excessive and not worth it. Uh, okay, one more detail, which I guess is not that important, but uh, some units are um, spell spellcasters. For example, for the Terrans we have Ghosts, the Reaper which can throw a mine, which actually counts as a spell, the Raven, the Battlecruiser Yamato Cannon, and I think also the Cyclone, uh, and the Mine. Spells ignore armor, which is why spell units are have tend to be very good against units with a lot of art armor, obviously such as Ultralis, for example. I think I covered more or less everything I wanted to cover. Trying to think of what I could have forgotten. I would say I have 51 idle workers, well I have like 70. Why is these not counting as idle workers? Okay, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, that was just me and going my trip. I hope this video explained some things to you, at least. And, um, oh yeah, no, actually there's one more thing, which is really important. You often hear casters talk about the build order advantage. A build order is basically the order in which you build <laughs> your first building at the beginning of the game. So, for example, as here I did, my build order was supply depot, barracks, gas, command center, reaper, uh, and then so on. And, for example, a... Um, well, an all-in build order or a cheese at the beginning of the game is going to beat a greedy build order just because you have units and your enemy won't. So you have a build order advantage or even a build order win. Build order win being very rare but the extreme case of a build order advantage. Uh, or another example, a safe build or a defensive build 
will most of the time be better than an aggressive or all-in build, since you will have enough to defend, but you are not limiting yourself and you're actually getting some upgrades or have some more economy or some sort of other advantage over the player all in. Um, yeah, I hope this kind of explains some more things to you. I hope this video was good. And next thing we're going to do is actually going to have a look at some pro games between Zerg and Terran, which happened not long ago. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Before we quit this, we are going to show that AI sucks. Kappa. And now I hope I don't win the fight and look like a retard. We're just going to go take the fight so you have some sexy action and maybe I can even show some macro. By the way, you should always move your tanks in your medevac, but I'm just <laughs> lazy as fuck right now to say it that way. Oh, that's just a. Oh, there we go. Yeah, AI sucks, confirmed. I mean, okay, this is easy AI, but even the hard AI, if I try, I beat easily, or very hard. Although, if you're new to the game, medium AI is probably going to be, like, pretty much your level after you've played a couple rounds. I just hope this AI actually gives up at some point, because one of the main issues with AI is that they don't give up. Oh yeah, one more thing which is really important and I nearly forgot. Oh my god, okay. Um, units have different types. They can be armored, mechanical as a tanks. For example, marines are light and biological. Marauders are armored and biological. Medivacs are, I think, armored and mechanical. Um, and so on. There's Pleonic. There is... Well, there's a bunch of, of types of units like that. And most units, or a lot of units, do bonus damage against certain types. So for example, the Marauder does 8 and versus Armored 13 per shot. Which means that against anything which is armored, be it a building, most most or all buildings are armored. Wait, let me just check. Yeah, I think all buildings are armored in the game. It will do 13 damage, and against any unit which is armored, same. And against any unit which is not, it will do, well, uh, 8. This being with plus 3 upgrades, yeah. For example, just to show that off real quick, if I shoot this marine once, he lost... I need to lose 10 HP, the fuck. Wait, now I'm confused. I am so confused right now. This has to be a bug. Wait. Okay, if I shoot this tank... I do... Oh yeah, because... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. My roller always shoots twice per shot, so to say. Um, so, he's doing 13 damage against the tank. The tank has 4 armor right now. No, zero, 1 armor? Exactly. 13 minus 1. It still makes no sense. Wait, why am I so confused? 13 minus 1 is 12 times 2 is 24. 160 minus 24 is 136. There we go. These marines are having 4 armor at the moment. So I do 8 times 2, well 8 minus 3 times 2, which is 5 times 2, which is 10 damage. Which, I'm happy, I managed to figure out, never do mass life, first rule of a caster. And, uh... Yeah, that's up. Okay, thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this. Please answer me in the comments. I am sorry if this became way longer than I intended it to, but, well, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Gang is here.